Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Travel with Brian. Now, I'm sure all other baseball fans are just as excited as me for opening day. In preparation for the upcoming season, I decided to sway from the usual theme of my videos. Instead of covering travel topics, on today's episode, I'll be covering my predictions for the 2023 Major League Baseball season. I will start with my prediction for the standings for each division, followed by my predictions for the playoffs and World Series. I am sure that many people will disagree with these predictions, so please comment and let me know of any criticism that you may have. Starting off with the AL East division, in fifth place, we have the Boston Red Sox. Unfortunately, the Red Sox have just completely imploded ever since winning the World Series, and I don't see any sign of a recovery this season. In fourth place, we have the Baltimore Orioles. The Orioles are definitely making a stride in the right direction, and have had some major prospects starting in the majors recently. Unfortunately, they still have a lot of work to do before they can be considered as a potential contender. In third place, we have the Toronto Blue Jays. The Blue Jays are a very solid team, and I definitely think that they could be a contender this year. The only thing keeping them out of first or second place in this division is that the AL East is probably the most difficult division in baseball. In second place, we have the Tampa Bay Rays. The Rays have been one of the most consistently good teams over the past few years, and I don't see any signs of them decreasing this season. In first place, we have the New York Yankees. As much as I hate to admit it, the Yankees are insanely good this year, and I don't think anyone in the AL East can stop them. Moving on to the AL Central Division, in fifth place, we have the Detroit Tigers. To be honest, I don't have much analysis as to why I put them below every other team. They just haven't been doing much in the past few seasons, and it doesn't appear that they've made any changes to improve this season. At number four, we have the Kansas City Royals. The Royals are looking a bit more well-rounded than the Tigers. Unfortunately, they still haven't made many changes that can potentially make them a contender this season. In third place, we have the Chicago White Sox. Now, the White Sox are probably the most disappointing team over the past few years. They have just been completely stacked and have completely fallen every year, and I don't really see this year being much different. In second place, we have the Minnesota Twins. The Twins are looking like quite a contender this year, and I really think they have potential to win this division. Unfortunately, I just see them falling slightly short by the end of the season. In first place, we have the Cleveland Guardians. The Guardians are looking fantastic this season, and I really think they have almost a lock on winning this division. The only thing that can stop them is if the Twins stay hot through most of the season. Moving on to the AL West division, in fifth place, we have the Oakland Athletics. To be honest, anyone who knows the current state of the A's knows that they're pretty much a guaranteed lock on last place in this division. In fourth place, we have the Texas Rangers. While the Rangers did make a huge offseason acquisition with Jacob deGrom, they still just aren't a very well-rounded team, and I really don't see them going anywhere higher in this division. In third place, we have the Los Angeles Angels. The Angels undoubtedly have the two best players in Major League Baseball. Unfortunately, they're still a surprisingly underwhelming team, and I really don't see them finishing any higher than third place. In second place, we have the Seattle Mariners. The Mariners have built up quite a team, and I definitely think that they have the potential to compete this season. In first place, we have the Houston Astros. The Astros' reign of domination shows no sign of slowing down, and I don't think that this season will be any different. Moving on to the NL East division, in fifth place, we have the Washington Nationals. Ever since winning the World Series in 2019, the Nationals have just completely collapsed, and I don't see that changing anytime this season. In fourth place, we have the Miami Marlins. The Marlins are a young team that's starting to look like they have a lot of potential. Unfortunately, I still don't see them being able to compete with any of the top teams in the division this year. In third place, 
We have the Atlanta Braves. The Braves are still one of the best teams in all of baseball, and I definitely could be wrong about putting them in third place. However, the top two teams in this division are just so stacked that I really think it has to push the Braves down into third place. In second place, we have the Philadelphia Phillies. The Phillies surprised everyone by winning the pennant last year, and they've made some pickups this season that are making them look like an even better team. And I do have to mention that I made this prediction prior to the injury to Reese Hoskins. While I think that will definitely cause some problems for them this season, I really don't see it being significant enough to drop them out of second place. In first place, we have the New York Mets. Despite falling short in the playoffs last year, the Mets still had one of the most solid teams all last season. This offseason, they've built on that foundation with one of the most active offseasons of any team in history. While they may have lost their closer in the World Baseball Classic, I still don't think that anyone can compete with the Mets in the NL East this season. Next up, we have the NL Central Division. Now, before I get started, I do need to specify that I am a huge Cubs fan, just in case you didn't already know that. However, I tried to be as unbiased as I could when it comes to this division. In fifth place, we have the Pittsburgh Pirates. To be honest, I thought about this one for way too long because either the Pirates or the Reds can wind up in last place. I just think that the Reds have the potential to have a slightly better season, and therefore I put the Pirates in last place. In fourth place, we have the Cincinnati Reds. As I just mentioned, I think the Reds definitely can wind up in last place. I just think that they have the potential to have a slightly better season than the Pirates. In third place, we have the Milwaukee Brewers. I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of hate for this decision. After all, the Brewers have some of the best pitchers of any team in baseball. However, their offense has been mediocre at best, and they've made very few changes to really turn the corner with their offense. Unless they can find an offensive spark, I really don't see them getting any higher than third place. In second place, we have the Chicago Cubs. Now, I'm sure this is the moment where I'm going to start getting a lot of comments about how biased I am. While I will admit that my bias may have influenced my decision-making a little bit, the Cubs were one of the most active teams this offseason, and they built on what already started to look like a well-rounded team by the end of last season. They still have a lot of work to do if they're ever going to compete for another World Series, but I definitely think that they have potential to finish second in the NL Central. In first place, we have the St. Louis Cardinals. As much as it pains me to admit it, the Cardinals are absolutely stacked this year, and I don't think any team in the NL Central has a chance to compete with them. Moving on to the NL West division, in fifth place, we have the Colorado Rockies. The West is similar to the Central in that I had a lot of trouble deciding on which team gets the fourth and which team gets the fifth place spot. While these two spots are anyone's guess, I think that the Diamondbacks are just a slightly better team, and therefore I put the Rockies in last place. In fourth place, we have the Arizona Diamondbacks. As I just mentioned, the Diamondbacks still have the potential to wind up in last place. I just think that they're a slightly better team than the Rockies, and therefore I put them in fourth place. In third place, we have the San Francisco Giants. While I don't necessarily think that the Giants are a bad team, I just don't see any potential that they can compete with the top two teams in this division. In second place, we have the Los Angeles Dodgers. This was probably the hardest decision that I had to make for these predictions, because the Dodgers are still looking like an insanely good team this season. While they definitely have the potential to win the division, I still think that they may fall one or two games short purely due to how great the Padres are looking this year. In first place, we have the San Diego Padres. I don't even know where to begin on talking about how amazing the Padres are looking this season. They surprised everyone with some of the most insane pickups last season, and I think they only fell short last year because most of their new players were still learning to work in a new environment with a new team. Now that they've had plenty of time to get acclimated to their new team, I don't think anyone can stop the Padres in this division. Now let's move along to the final playoff positions for each league.
Starting off with the division winners for the American League, with the number one spot, we have the New York Yankees. Slightly behind them with the number two spot, we have the Houston Astros. Rounding out the division winners, the third spot goes to the Cleveland Guardians. Moving on to the wildcard teams, the number one wildcard spot and the fourth playoff spot overall goes to the Tampa Bay Rays. With the second wildcard spot and number five overall, we have the Toronto Blue Jays. And to round out the American League, with the final playoff spot, we have the Seattle Mariners. Moving on to the division winners for the National League, in the number one overall spot, we have the New York Mets. In the number two spot, we have the St. Louis Cardinals. In the final division spot, at number three, we have the San Diego Padres. Now, I do need to clarify that I think the Padres are a much better team than the Cardinals. However, the Cardinals play in one of the weakest divisions, which gives them the opportunity to regularly earn easy wins against their division opponents. Meanwhile, the Padres are still going to have to play regular games against the Dodgers throughout the season. These games will be highly competitive and could potentially result in a few extra losses for the Padres. Therefore, I think the Cardinals will finish slightly ahead of the Padres. Moving on to the wildcard teams, the number one wildcard spot and fourth spot overall goes to the Los Angeles Dodgers. The number two wildcard spot and fifth place overall goes to the Philadelphia Phillies. And the final playoff spot for the National League goes to the Chicago Cubs. Moving ahead to the American League wildcard series, in the series between the Tampa Bay Rays and the Toronto Blue Jays, I have the Blue Jays winning two games to one. In the series between the Cleveland Guardians and the Seattle Mariners, I have the Mariners winning two games to one. Moving on to the National League wildcard series, in the series between the Los Angeles Dodgers and the Philadelphia Phillies, I have the Dodgers winning two games to one. In the series between the San Diego Padres and the Chicago Cubs, I have the Padres sweeping the series two games to zero. I know it was a little excessive to put the Cubs in a playoff spot, but being realistic, if they somehow do make the playoffs, I don't see any chance they could make it past the wildcard round. Moving on to the American League Division Series, in the series between the Houston Astros and the Toronto Blue Jays, I have the Blue Jays pulling off a huge upset by winning the series three games to two. In the series between the New York Yankees and the Seattle Mariners, I have the Yankees winning three games to one. Moving on to the National League Division Series, in the series between the St. Louis Cardinals and the Los Angeles Dodgers, I have the Dodgers sweeping the series three games to zero. Moving on to the series between the New York Mets and the San Diego Padres, I have the Padres winning three games to two. While I think both teams are pretty evenly matched, the Mets have a tendency to choke in high-pressure playoff spots, which I think gives the edge to the Padres. Moving on to the American League Championship Series between the New York Yankees and the Toronto Blue Jays, I have the American League pennant going to the New York Yankees, four games to two. Moving on to the National League Championship Series between the San Diego Padres and the Los Angeles Dodgers, I have the National League pennant going to the San Diego Padres, four games to three. I am predicting that this will be quite an NLCS, and will be considered one of the best of all time. Before we move along to the World Series, I just wanted to ask you to please go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And please don't forget to like this video, and also leave your thoughts about my predictions in the comments below. Finally, we've arrived at the 2023 World Series between the San Diego Padres and the New York Yankees. And I am predicting that the winner of this year's World Series will be the San Diego Padres, four games to one. While the Padres are definitely going to have some challenges this season, I still believe that they are the best team in either of the two leagues. Therefore, I view them as the most likely team to win the World Series. So there you have my predictions for the 2023 Major League Baseball season. It'll be very interesting to see how many of these I actually get correct. 
But in the meantime, I just wanted to say thank you very much to each and every one of you for watching my video today. Until next time, this has been Travel with Brian.